Hey, what is up everyone? This is Hezzy back for another video. And today I wanted to do a 100 subscriber special. I know I'm a little late on this cause now we're way past that, but I wanted to do a little something to show my appreciation to you guys for getting me to 100 subscribers. I've been working on this channel for years now, since 2014. And it's a really big milestone for me to hit 100 and I hope we can continue going on. So, what I'm doing today is showing you a day in the life as a news photojournalist. If you guys didn't know, I work for the local station here, Fox 25, and I'm a photojournalist for them. And so I wanted to record a video taking you throughout my day. So I got to the station, got all my gear, and finally got my first shoot. So I was sent to get some location video of a house fire that happened the night prior. And so this is me pulling up to the scene and getting that video. I'm getting all my gear together and getting everything fixed and ready up so that I can head up to the house and shoot the video. And so there's quite a few things that I need to do before going and shooting the video. I like to get all my gear together. I started recently bringing my photography camera along with me just to shoot some shots of the scenes that I see. And so I have to get my main camera together. It's a Sony XD cam. I don't know the exact model. But I have to get that together, format the media, get all my audio levels set, and then I can head off straight to the shoot. And so you'll see me here walking up. And luckily enough, I came here in time where some of the family members were here. And so I'm not sure the exact relations that this man that I'm walking up to right now is, but he gave me a couple shots of the night of and the fire that happened that night. And so you'll see me speaking to him here. He gave me some of the information. I kind of gave him a rundown of what I wanted to do. Hey, would I be able to get some video of the house? So being a news photographer or a photojournalist is an interesting job because you get to see a lot of things that not every day people get to see, you know what I mean? I get a lot of behind the scenes on stuff. You see a lot of tragic things. You hear a lot of tragic things. And so here is a house fire that happened and this house fire, I don't, I don't know the information exactly how it started, but long story short, it kind of burned like this half of the house. And so walking into the background, into the backyard here, you get to see a lot of stuff. So those little containers and stuff that you see on the floor may not seem like anything, but they're IV bags and medical syringes. Cause obviously like these people were in this fire and they had like smoke inhalation and stuff like that. Thank you. And you normally don't see this aftermath in a lot of scenes. So it's pretty interesting to see this aftermath here. This is the first time I recorded an aftermath of fire. Most of the time I'm there when the fire is happening but actually seeing the aftermath is pretty interesting. So there's a lot of things that I keep in mind when I'm going to go get shots of these scenes, especially location video here. The night prior, one of our other photogs came in and shot video of the whole place when the fire was happening and when all the fire crews were there. So keeping that in mind, I wanted to get some of the aftermath, what inside of the house looked like and what was on the outside. And you'll see here that I'm taking a couple pictures. You'll see those pictures coming up on screen here. And it's a something to see. You don't normally see like the aftermath of a house being set ablaze and stuff like that. And it's like seeing everything right there is surreal. Because just like the night prior, people were living here perfectly fine. And then they realized they found in shambles. So here we walk to the other side of the house and I'm just kind of getting photos and videos on this side of the house. I took quite a few photos of rubble and debris laying around and inside the house. So 
So finally I finish the shoot that I'm at and I get a text message that they need me to go to the courthouse here in OKC to go get some files. So if you're wondering how the news gets some of their information, we'll go to the courthouse and we'll look through the documents there. So you'll see me going up here to the parking meter, getting it out, you know, paying for my parking there. And then I walk up to the courthouse and I'm going to go to the fourth floor to go look at some documents. finally getting to all the documents so the courthouse has all the documents kind of laid out right in front of you and just kind of scroll through them and look for, for some interesting stories so i found four of them in total i found one where a group of people came together and murdered a person i found a dude trying to engage in prostitution but it turned out to be an undercover cop or a glowy or you know there's a ton of different names for it i also found a dude who was on drugs broke into a house and kidnapped some, someone. That's a pretty interesting story. And finally, I found an online predator that was talking to a 14 and 16 year old. These are all very interesting stories that we could cover at a later date or some other time. So finally, I finish, I'm heading out of the building and I get a text message saying that there is a fire that I need to get to. So I'll leave you guys with that story. So when you get to an active scene like this, there's a couple things you got to keep in mind. As media, you've got to keep up a certain kind of presence because you don't want to be unprofessional or act dumb or anything because this speaks on the whole corporation. And then you also have to keep in mind that there's active fire crews running around working to suppress the fires that are in front of you and working to get rid of any embers or anything that are moving around. So you got to be very aware of where you're standing and what you're doing. And finally, that you're press. And as press, we kind of get a lot of leeway. So we're able to like really move up and, you know, get right up in there as long as we're not blocking any fire personnel or anything like that. So you'll see me actually get up close and personal with where the fire was. And you'll actually see that one of the firemen over there actually told me to stay out of their way because I was walking pretty close to the engine. And with these active scenes, you don't really know a lot of information. So a lot of the time you just have to try to pull one of the firemen aside, preferably not one of the firemen because you know they're working on there. But if there's no officers nearby, you want to pull one of them aside to try to talk to them. And the firemen will normally help and direct you to a fire chief or one of the police chiefs or somebody who's on scene who has that information. In this case, I got here pretty late. so. There was nobody over there to really give me a lot of information or to give me sound. What sound is, it's just a video of like a police chief or a fireman chief speaking on what's happening. Another thing you want to keep in mind is when you're on scenes like this, there'll be family around. Family, neighbors, people who are concerned, and so you'll have little watch parties kind of like how you see them walking past right now. And some of them might ask you information or anything that's what's going on at the current moment. And so for most of that time, you just try to relay what you have and keep moving on because you can't sit and talk forever, you know what I mean? And you got to keep like a very kind and personable decorum about you.
And you know, while you're out shooting, you want to get some creative shots or shots that not many other people think of or something that stands out because you got to keep in mind that there's like two or three other stations who are covering the exact same thing as you. So you want to try to get a different view or try to get in closer or try to do something different so that your content stands out. Because if you don't do so, then you kind of just blend into the other stations and you'll get less viewership and stuff like that. You want to keep that in mind. And I just wanted to apologize to you guys for my jacket keeps getting in the shot. Uh, for this setup, I was using the GoPro head mount on my chest. And so I had it kind of like in a J-wigged way around my chest. So that's why the shot keeps getting hit by my jacket. I actually bought a real vest that I'm going to wear over my work vest so that if you guys want another episode of this, you won't have my chat get, keep getting in the shot. So sorry about that. And please bear with me as I get better at making content for y'all. Finally, after I get the video for the news, I go myself and get some personal shots. And these shots are also very useful because we can use them for web stores and stuff. But most of the time, I just like to get shots that I, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll see them there. So after I finish at this fire, I get another message to head to Hefner because there was a power pole that snapped and fell onto the road. And so I rush on over there and I get my shots. Now with shots like these where there's traffic, you know, moving through and stuff like that, people get distracted. So you want to be kind of like not in the way because, you know, as in use personnel, people will look at you and are very curious about what you're doing. And so I tend to try to wear like all black, something that doesn't stand out too much. And then also wearing all black is pretty nice because I don't like being like the center of attention. And so I like to get my shots and get in and get out because the longer you're there, the more people you distract and you don't want that. So I finally finish up at the Hefner scene. I'm able to make it back to the office to drop off all the footage and files that I picked up. And on most days, it's not like super, super hectic, but today I was like just getting sets of stuff back and back. And that just happens in news, you know? You never know when news is happening. News just happens. And so you gotta kind of be on your feet and ready to go. So after I finished that, that was pretty much all the work that I did for the day. It's pretty late in the day at this point. And so I go ahead and take a lunch break, eat my lunch. And there's this movie theater that's by my workplace that I thought was pretty cool. So I grabbed a couple pictures there. So 
So finally, that is just about the end of my day. I finished up taking those pictures out there, went back to the office, and now I just gotta drop off all my gear. It's nothing crazy. I already imported all my footage for the day, so I just drop off all my gears, drop the batteries off inside of there, lock up the cars, and head on home. So if you guys enjoyed this video and would like to see more, leave comments down below and also hit that like button because that really helps push the video out to YouTube more and also shows that you guys enjoy this content. I've bought a little bit better of equipment so that the, mo the audio isn't as muffled. I have an actual chest mount. I was using the head mount for this and I just put it on my chest. So I actually have a real chest mount for this. So if you guys would like to see more content like this, feel free to leave a comment down below or hit that like button or subscribe. And yeah, y'all have a beautiful rest of your days. I'll leave you guys with the rest of this video. It's nothing too much. I'm just putting up my gear and heading to my car. And yeah, y'all have a great day. I'll see you guys next time.